Hi, I'm Tommy Smith. I began running some years ago when I was a small kid, and of course I've been running competitively ever since. All my life, I wanted to be a sprinter, but many people said, including my family, said, Tommy, you're too tall, you should be a high jumper, even try pole vaulting, long jumping, anything, but sprinting, I don't know. But over the years, I suppose I proved a lot of people wrong because I've done quite well, I believe, in sprinting. But through hard work, dedication, I've competed all around the world. And I like that very much. I was fortunate enough to win a few races at its highest level. So with all this in hand, today I'd like to pass on some of the things which I've learned, I've picked up over the years, which have made me, Tommy Smith, a better sprinter. It should be quite a bit of fun. So I hope you join with me. Come along. Tommy Smith is one of the most successful and exciting runners the world has ever seen carrying on the tradition of the great American sprinters, from Jesse Owens to Carl Lewis. Former 200-meter world record holder and Olympic champion, Tommy Smith is today one of the foremost teachers and coaches of sprint running. You find a spot so we can do our warm-ups, people. Warm up, good lap around the track to get your muscles loose, get your blood flowing, get your mind clear, and then do stretching exercises. Of course, now you know what we're here for, right? Stretching exercises. Okay, first exercise we're gonna do is a top body exercise. We're gonna warm the shoulders and the lower back up and the neck by sucking your stomach in, reaching out and straight up. Fingers outstretch, suck your stomach in. Now push straight up, push straight up. And again, retract. And fingers pointed toward the sky, but bring those arms down to your side. Now, hand relax. Concentrate on the neck. Make sure that neck is relaxed, folks. We want the neck to always be relaxed. Jog in place. <laughs> Make sure your jaws are loose. That's good. Come on, Jerron. Come on, come on. Toes, toes. Bounce off your toes. We're still loosening the calf muscle up. And stop. Hands out to your side now, well, all the way out. Twist to your right. Your right. And hold it as far as you can hold it. You feel a sensation in the mid part of your body. Now come around, don't throw, not centrifugal thrust, muscular movement. That's what we're looking for, muscular movement. Suck that stomach in, get the neck up. Keep that head on your shoulders all the time. You notice once we get into sprinting, I'll start talking about keeping the head on the shoulders. Forward. Now hands to your side. Now lean back. About 20 degrees, lean back and hold it. You'll pull the rectus area, the stomach area. And up. OK, hands out in front of you once again now. Hands out in front of you. Here, lock. Push out, drop your head, bow your back, lean forward, in other words, lean forward. Now push against those fingers with your hands, push. You feel the shoulder blade area, right? Right in the shoulder blade area here, right where the pull is. In sprinting, you use a lot of the arm action, which will come directly from the shoulder power. And of course, the shoulder blades are in there somewhere, right in there. OK, and up. We call these quarter squats, or quarter thrust. Would you go down, quarter, thrust up. Every time you come up, you exhale. OK, we're down, up, exhale. Faster. Faster. Suck the stomach in. And stop. Now go down half, all the way down half. Drop those hands between the legs, but don't touch anything. Now I want you to feel the muscle parts that's being pulled, that's being stretched. 
Now you slowly come up, very slowly feel a push against the surface. Where do you feel it? Right here. In striding, it's very important. You drive here. You're driving. The quadricep group. Pulling down here, hit the ground, bicep femoris. OK, since we finished our warm-ups now, folks, let's go on the other side and start our sprinting drills. Let's go. What is sprinting? Number one, sprinting is getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. But technically, sprinting is using your muscles to their maximum without tensing up. I am a long sprinter. I can run the 100 or the 400. There's a sprinter or a short sprinter who only runs the 100 and maybe the 200. So sprinters comes in different sizes, different shapes, different forms, and different distances. So the Olympic events in sprints are the 100, 200, and 400. Distance runners, if they run as fast as they possibly could for 200 meters, they would probably pull a muscle or their body blow up or whatever. By the same token, a sprinter will have difficulty in running an 800 or 1500 and up. Your body would probably blow up also, or you might pull a muscle, or you cardiovascularly, you will not be in shape. So we're talking about differences in events, differences in people's training. Anybody in this group here is an artist, a painter, or a pianist? OK, you know how you take that brush, round curves, make different insignias on, on a pad? Sprinting is the same thing. You have to pattern. It's an art. You get to point A to point B fast as possible, using your muscle to their maximum without tensing up, then you become a piece of art. And that's what we'll be doing today, trying to get you to look like a fine piece of art from point A to point B. But before we do that, we'll go through a drill we call bounding. Bounding is very important because each bound is one long step. Each time you take a step and you come midair and you stop, that's a stride. Make sure when you bound, you also use the arm because arms are very important in body motivation. OK, I want to see the first group on the line. Remember, bounding, relaxation, and balance. OK, ready, go. Knees, knees, knees. Get your head off the ground. Look out in front of you. Second group, go. Arms, arms, arms. Bound, Take, slow it down, slow it down. Concentration and balance. OK, from bounding now, we'll go into sprinting. Let me show you bounding, and then let me show you sprinting. Sprinting is here. Bounding is here. There is a difference. There is a great difference. When you start your sprinting, I want you to come up on your toes. When you come up on your toes, I do not want you to go back down on your heels again. We call this running tall. Just another form of sprint preparation. Watch my feet. Watch my feet. When you start your sprint work, you start up. I'll say, ready. You come up. You lean forward. Then you take your stride. Keep your head off the ground. Run with authority. One thing you must do when you're working out to maintain control of the mind. OK, number two, same thing. Concentrate on high knees, leg turnover. Come up, get set on your own. Ready, up. Sprinters, I want you to run balls of your feet, not heel toe. I want bound, OK? Now we're going to break this down into three segments. The bounding, the high knee sprint, then the actual speed itself. This is very vital in any sprinting race, to know where the different part of the race ends and begins. And folks, believe it or not, you must have a beginning and an end within every race. From the first line here to the first pylon, we're going to do our bounding, which is power off the foot. From the second to the third pylon, we're going to go through a high knee drill. Then from the second to the third pylon, it's pure speed at its best, combining the bound with the high knees. So you've got three complete segments of speed, OK? Which, put them together, and you can for sure bring about 
the technique of sprinting. Without them, you're lost. Okay, the first two, you understand. You know what's happening. Okay, first segment, second segment, and the third segment. I'll say, ready, then you come up on your, your balls of your feet, then you go. Make sure you're under control now. Don't leave anything untouched. Okay, ready? Okay, folks, don't forget balance. Don't forget balance. Pure speed now. Ready? Another good exercise you can do as a sprinter is use inclines, heels, stairs, such as we have up and down here. These stairs or heels would certainly enhance the power in the legs, higher leg and the lower leg, also the Achilles tendon or the heel. When you run on the balls of your feet, you must have enough power in your calf muscle, in your, your uh, hamstring to propel your body forward. And by using inclines, you can much more readily attain the power the physical power and the mental power to, uh, to sprint. So what we're gonna do now, each individual is gonna start at the bottom, he hit each stair on the way up, then walk back down, then you're gonna go up again, hitting every other stair. Number one, the single stair would create leg speed and high knees, as we've already done earlier in one of our drills. Number two, which is hitting every other step, would create the effect of bounding, as we've done also earlier. So you'll get the arm action in, and you'll get the knee action up, hold, and make it another stride. So once you do these, you'll see the effect of stairs or slightly inclines in sprinting. Kevin, why don't you uh, start first? I want you to use each stair, knee action and arm action, OK, anytime. You see the knees, the knees coming up, and the arms are pumping. Now that creates power in the legs from the Achilles tendon, which is to the back of the heel, all the way up to the, to the butt area. Now when he comes down, he goes back up again. Notice that he'll, he'll hit every other stair. The difference in what he just finished and what he's doing now, you'll see the arms have a much longer flow, and the knees will come up, and they will be stationary for just a split second then they'll come down again giving you the bounding effect okay kevin try that now take your time control hit 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 see the difference the power is magnified there because you're pushing longer with each leg okay when you're coming down folks come down under control don't start flopping down it's not good to flop okay who's number two okay that's good that's good that's good knees 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 Keep, knees, keep going, keep going all the way up. You got about 20 more steps to go. Keep going, knees, knees. Okay, turn around, come down under control, under control. That's a good one, that's good, that's a good one. Keep going, concentrate on movement. That's good, that's good. All the way up. Another exercise we can use for sprinting is the pull or drag technique or exercise. We can use a towel such as this. You can use a pull rope or anything that will make the athlete drag the coach down the track. What this is good for is the power in the calf muscle and also in the hamstring. I want the arms moving, I want the head still, and I want the Achilles tendon, the heel, full force. Why? This will create the method of power which you should have going down the track. We're gonna start with you here. I'm gonna put the towel around him. I'm gonna stationary with the towel, both of my hands. You can hold the towel this way, or you can hold with one hand. Doesn't make a difference. Whatever is comfortable for the coach. I'm gonna hold with one hand. Okay, David, I want you to go down, make sure that you're using your hand to the fullest extent, and you're driving. Face loose, head on your shoulders. Ready, go. Drive your knees, drive your knees. Go. 
Come on, drive, drive. Knees drive, drive. That's it, that's it. Go. Come on. That's good, that's good, that's good. On your marks. Sit. Go. Because sprinting is so short, you have the 100 meters to 200 meters and the 400 meters, starting is very vital. If you get behind, let's say, uh, a half a step in the first three to five steps, you're gonna have a problem catching up in the 100 meters. 200 meters, you have a little bit more time. 400 meters, of course, you're talking about now pace. But the start is very important in those three events. Now, on the line, on the starting line, you want your hand as close to the line as possible, but not on the line. Anytime your hand comes on the line, it's illegal and you can be disqualified. So keep those hands behind the line, use the thumb and the forefinger as your guide, such as this. You wanna be rather comfortable in the blocks, you wanna set back in the get set position, when you wanna roll forward, notice that my elbows are locked. When the starter says set, you move forward and you rise now notice my head is right on my shoulders. My head is not up, my head is not down. Why? Because you don't run with your head down, you don't run with your head up, you run with your head directly on your shoulders. So you always keep this in mind. The usage of your muscles to the maximum without tensing up is very important. Come down, you set. In the get set position, notice my elbows and my head. Elbows locked, head doesn't move. Comes up, go! Notice my lead arm. Very low because I wanted to bring my body out. The first step is so important. You need the balance, you need the power, and you need the control. Go! This is a starting block, and it is very vital you know how to use this thing. Into the block, step out front of you, the closest foot, the nearest foot to you, stretch, plant. Rear foot, stretch, plant, lock, bar knee, then push yourself back in the blocks. Some of you might be fortunate enough to have spikes. If you are, that's good. Like me, when I first started, I wasn't this fortunate. These are for top level sprinters. You don't have to have spikes to run track and field, but it enhances your performance just as the starting block here does. Notice these spikes are one quarter inch long. On all weather surfaces, one quarter inch spikes is the longest you should use. And on some surfaces, you should use one eighth of an inch. The three keys from the starter will be on your marks, set, a pause, two to three seconds, then the gun will sound. You must maintain stillness until that gun sounds, otherwise you could be disqualified. Tong, come in here, let's go through the fundamentals of a sprint start. Okay, first of all, I want you down in the on your marks position. Okay, can you get down, let me take a look at it. Okay, good, good, good. I want to see you in a set position. Okay, now, this leg is too straight. Straighten that down, bring it forward. The elbows are locked out. Okay, you're too short. So down again, bring this feet back some. Bring the front feet back about four inches right here. Now I want you to roll forward when I say set. Roll forward, make sure the elbows are locked out. Hands are behind the line. Your head is on your shoulders. Set. Go! So I want your hand closer. There you go. Closer to the, closer to the. Okay, out. Spread them just a little bit. Spread the other one. Okay, very good, very good. Bring your hands a little bit. You want to support your shoulders, not your chest, your shoulders. So bring each hand another inch to the right and an inch to the left over there. Okay. Head on your shoulders. Very relaxed. Nope, nope, you're not looking up. Head on your shoulders. Okay. Set position. Okay, now this right left foot should come up another inch. Another inch or so. Okay, 
bring the right foot up the same, because I want both legs bent to a point where you can get propulsion off of both legs for an instant. Up a little higher, roll forward. Now go, go. Not bad, pretty good. Okay, we'll start one with the blocks this time. All the principles are the same. You can step over the block, make sure his feet planted firmly on the blocks, forward and rear. The hands here again is right behind the line, high enough to get a quick start off the ground with your fingers. Set. Go. Not bad, pretty good. Out of the three sprint events we've talked about, the 100, the 200, and the 400, there are two which have curves. Of course, that is the 200 and the 400 meters. In the 200 and the 400, you must remember two things, the lean forward and the lean inward. And of course, you must maintain balance, which is a more difficult balance than the regular sprint out of the blocks in the 100. The knees must maintain a steady pumping action. Of course, the arm should also have a pumping action. Your head is on your shoulders, and you have that lean forward and inward. OK, everybody, on your marks. Let's make it good. Set, go. Oh let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We've gone through different segments of sprinting, the high knees, the, the, the arm action, the neck placement on the shoulders, the coming out of the blocks, the using of the power pull or the power drag. Now. Let's try to put it all together into a total sprint, 100-yard dash. OK, in your blocks, you're going 100 meters. On your marks. Set, go! Try and complete each teaching session with a competitive situation. Encourage the youngsters to sprint over 100 meters, incorporating all the elements taught in the session. This will help lift the enthusiasm of the beginner from the outset of the teaching process and bring out their faults like a shaking head or an unrelaxed neck. Let us remind ourselves of some of the key points in sprinting. First, high knees. What is high knees? High knees is the ability to get your knees up high enough to reach with that same leg, giving you the chance to push off with the opposite leg. Number two, arm action. Arm action will complement the stride. If you don't use arm action, you will not be able to use to the maximum that particular stride. Number three, keep your head on your shoulders. Not down, not up, because you don't walk with your head down or up. You walk with it on your shoulders. Sprinting should be exactly the same. And of course, on down the line a little further, the lean of the body. What's the lean of the body? The ability, again, to lean, to give momentum to your body. Lastly of those is relaxation. The ability to relax. The usage of your muscles to the maximum without tensing up. So keep working hard at it. And above all, have fun doing it. Good luck.